Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Robbins, and welcome to Life, Death, and the Space Between podcast. I'm a clinical psychologist and medium, and here we explore life, death, consciousness, and what it all means. Today, I have another ghost story for you all, and of course, you're going to get a PSA beforehand. If you have not signed up for my newsletter, head over to dramyrobbins.com. You can sign up for that. You get little interesting tidbits in your mailbox once a week that hopefully help you live your life backwards, live with a little more meaning, a little more essence. And also, if you have not signed up for the program yet, you can sign up also at dramyrobbins.com under courses and you can get on my wait list. The course is launching the 19th will be the first day of the program. So if you want information about that, make sure you sign up and you will get that in your inbox. So today I have another ghost story for you all. I'm excited to share this one. I always love your ghost stories. And again, if you have ghost stories to share, please send me an email with your story at dramyrobbins at gmail.com. Lots of Dr. Amy Robbins ads. So here we go with today's ghost story. At the end of March in 2018, I woke up from a very vivid dream. In the dream, my grandma Mimi came to visit me. I was very aware in the dream that she was in spirit form. We sat down in my bedroom and started to catch up. She passed in February of 2015. Midway through the conversation, I interrupted her and said, Mimi, why are you here? She replied, to get Bobo. He's ready. My grandpa, Baltazar Para, known as Bobo, to his grandkids, was and is my best friend. We had a connection undeniable and always have. We were inseparable. Over the last few years of his life, he started to suffer from dementia. I had a very hard time handling it because I never thought he would succumb to such a terrible disease. Not only that, he had a hard time remembering me, which was something I never thought I would experience. I had visited him briefly in October 2017, and I remember he woke from his nap to see me sitting beside him. He looked confused, as if he knew me but didn't know how. I started to talk to him, saying, It's me, Kali, a family nickname. I am visiting Stephanie, my cousin. I came from Illinois, and I wanted to see you. I love you, and I'm so happy to see you. A few minutes later, you could tell he could somewhat remember that he didn't exactly know how he knew me, but he knew me. We loved each other, and his eyes began to water, as did mine. Fast forward to my dream. The second she said this, I woke up from sleep and had tears streaming down my eyes. I tried not to put too much stock in this because I didn't want to believe it to be true. This was the moment I had been dreading since I understood what dying meant. We were so close that I even had a dance with him at my wedding, in addition to the father-daughter dance. Yet again, and had a vivid dream. In the dream, I walked into my grandparents' house and went into the room that Bobo started sleeping in when he needed a hospital bed, except it was completely empty of the normal furniture. Instead, there was a circle of chairs. I looked at his caregiver and said, where is Bobo? She said, nobody told you? He passed away, Nicole. Again, I immediately woke up with tears streaming down my face. Later that day, I received a FaceTime call from my mom. I knew. I said, it's Bobo, isn't it? He was having surgery on his throat because he kept having difficulties eating and choking. In surgery, he went into respiratory arrest. He was not supposed to be resuscitated, but he was. He eventually woke up and I was able to FaceTime him. The next two weeks, he declined quickly. He would be sleeping and speaking Spanish. He was from Spain, about the orange groves. We believe he was speaking to his mom. In fact, my mom and cousin smelt oranges at the same time. My great-grandma used to walk around peeling and eating oranges. 
He then went to sleep and no longer was speaking, eating, or drinking. I made the decision to fly to New York to be with him the weekend before he passed. I spent the whole weekend by his side, only to get up to use the restroom and to eat. I held his hand the whole time, told him how much I loved him, how important he was to me, and that it was okay if he was ready to go. I constantly kissed his cheek several times in a quick kissing motion every time I had to get up and let go of his hand. We listened to our favorite artist, Josh Groban, that whole weekend. I left that Sunday kissing his forehead knowing that this was the last time I would see or touch him in a physical embodiment. I cried the whole flight home. The next days were hard. I would stare at my phone waiting for the call. On April 25, 2018, he took his last breath and was surrounded by his kids, my dad, and one of his grandchildren. I normally had my phone on so that if I got the call, I would hear it. That night, I had put it on silent. I woke up and realized my husband hadn't left for work, and I knew. I looked at my phone to see the missed calls. I flew out that Thursday for his funeral. On Friday night, my sister had fallen asleep on their couch and had left no room for me, so I plopped on a seat on the chair he used to sleep in prior to needing the hospital bed. The chair sat in front of the bay window he loved so much. He used to get up every night, walk down the hall, take a swig of Pepsi or Coke, and then peer out the window to make sure all was in order. He was a police officer. In the morning, I was in a hazy sleep, but to the left, in my peripheral vision, I saw what seemed like a colorful static choppily moving down the hall. Then the static turned into Bobo, physical form of how I knew him to be, in the shirt and the version of him that I remembered him being in right before his memory started to decline. He peered out the bay window, then bent over and kissed my cheek, just like I had, fast with a lot of little pecks. I started giggling because his beard was tickling my cheek. I immediately woke from the hazy sleep and burst into tears, running to my mom and saying, Bobo is okay, he just kissed me. I immediately called my husband to tell him the story. He said, Nicole, that's crazy. I have a crazy story too. I asked him what it was. At the time, our youngest was just one and a half and not quite talking at all. He was sleeping through the night at that point. Lane, our youngest, had never gotten to meet Bobo. Bobby, my husband, said that at about 3 a.m. he heard Lane babbling. Bobby got up to check on him to tell him to go back to bed. When he opened the door, Lane was standing straight up in his crib, pointing and saying, it Bobo, it Bobo. Again, he was sleeping through the night, not really talking at the time, and had never met him. It was the same night Bobo came to me. Ever since this night, I have had lots of moments of hearing him. It brings me so much comfort and peace. Lane also has claimed that he has slept with him several nights. Thank you for this opportunity to share my story with you all. Wow, these are always so powerful for me. I hope you all enjoyed that story. And again, if you have a ghost story of your own to share, please reach out to me at dramyrobbins at gmail. Send me your story and I would love to share it with all of you. So thank you for this, Nicole, for sharing the beautiful story of your Bobo. Like what you heard today and want to hear more? Wondering what comes next and what it all means? Head over to Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts and hit subscribe. Also, if you could take a minute to rate and review my podcast, I would really appreciate it. Stay tuned as we continue to explore life, death, and the space between.